So in limited stage Hodgkin lymphoma, our standard therapy for many years has been ABVD with or without radiation therapy. Most recently, we've been eliminating radiation therapy in the lowest risk patients, but a number of patients will still require radiation therapy, which does still offer a modest progression-free survival benefit. We've also commonly been using ABVD as our backbone for what, uh, for decades. Uh, but ABVD, of course, has potential uh, uh, side effects, including most notably the risk of bleomycin lung injury related to, of course, the bleomycin. In advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma, we've substituted uh, brentuximab vidotin, the anti-CD30 antibody drug conjugate, for bleomycin uh, as part of the brentuximab AVD regimen in advanced stage disease, which now shows a progression-free and overall survival benefit over ABVD alone for stage three or four patients. But in limited stage patients, we conducted a phase two trial of brentuximab AVD, again, just substituting the brentuximab for bleomycin, and found excellent efficacy. But as with the Echelon 1 trial in advanced stage disease, found excess toxicity of uh, peripheral sensory neuropathy, neutropenia, and neutropenic fever, we, we, which we attribute to overlapping toxicities between brentuximab vidotin and vinblastine, both of which target the microtubule. As a follow-up phase two study, we therefore eliminated the vinblastine and conducted a phase two study of brentuximab AD in non-bulky, limited stage classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Those data recently published in Blood Advances look excellent. We see a very high complete response rate and see that 91% of patients remain progression free uh, with this reduced chemotherapy intensity regimen and that we see a marked reduction in the incidence of toxicities. We saw no grade four neutropenia in that trial. We saw much less um, um, uh, peripheral sensory neuropathy with no high grade peripheral sensory neuropathy reported. And we saw no cases of neutropenic fever without the need for growth factor support. Building upon that experience, the next question is, can we incorporate yet another novel targeted therapy without amplifying chemotherapy? And so in collaboration with the sponsor, Seattle Genetics, we conducted a phase two trial with interim analysis presented at this ASH meeting, looking at brentuximab, adriamycin to carbazine plus nivolumab. These interim data continue to show benefit for reducing chemotherapy intensity and adding novel agents with high rates of complete response and very exciting rates of durable progression-free survival, though at limited follow-up. We'll look forward to hopefully about a year from now having a primary analysis of that study with the full population. And what I anticipate is that we're gonna see that, that reducing chemotherapy intensity and using novel agents such as brentuximab, vidotin, and immune checkpoint inhibitors can amplify efficacy and reduce chemotherapy toxicities, all the while allowing elimination of the short and long-term effects of consolidative radiation therapy.